Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. Today I have with me Deborah Baez, and I want to tell you a little bit about her because I absolutely love what she put in her her bio because it just it's it so represents who she is from the meeting that I had with her before, and I I absolutely love it. So let me tell you about Deborah. She is passionate about about health and healing of the body, mind, and spirit. Her purpose is to guide others in passing down healthier and healed cycles as their legacy. She's a servant leader, Latina and Chicana, daughter of a Mexican immigrant elderly mother and a deceased Chicano father. She's bilingual, biliterate mom of two, and formal educator in the school system, and currently an educator in wellness and a certified healer. Welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you so much. I am so excited to have you here to share your story in direct sales and network marketing, but then also get to talk about some of the the healing modalities that you do as well, because I think that's a really important addition, because when you are someone who is in network marketing and direct sales, really getting yourself to stand out compared to the 20, 30, 40, 50,000 other people who quote unquote, do the same thing you do. Mm-hmm. This really offers you an opportunity to to be a little different. So, but let's start with how did you get into your Arbon business? Yeah, so it's actually been over nine years, which is wild. Uh, and it it coincides, um, but not, you know, definitely purposeful, I guess, with my children. My eldest is about to be 10. And I really found this at a time when I was, I was teaching. I was pregnant. <laughs> uh, I was teaching a bilingual uh, dual immersion here in Long Beach, California. And I was starting to think about what I was doing differently. I wanted to raise my kids. I was learning about health and wellness because I wanted to make sure my kids were going to be healthy. And a few months after having my first, I was introduced to these products and I feel like it happened for a reason. I was looking for healthier products. I didn't want to put anything toxic on my babies. And at the time I only had one, the second one came shortly after. And I was also um, open and looking for something different. Teaching was really rewarding, but it was also very stressful. And I knew I wanted to focus on my kids and raise my kids a certain way. And so I knew that I was you know, I was, I was the best equipped for it, me, their mother, you know? (laughs) So that's when I found the products and I knew I wanted the products. And then I saw the bigger picture and it evolved into a business. And a few months later, I decided to, um, to focus on my business and, and my kids. And I left teaching now it's been over nine, nine years. Yeah. Over nine years ago. Oh, wow. And so in that time, what are some of the accomplishments and achievements that you have hit in your business and, or in your personal life that, that you are really proud of because of the the business? Yeah. So this may be less traditional type of answer, but I think of the bigger picture, right? There's there's less of us in business, period, in the world, right? And and then even at my level, I think we're a ten percent of our company. So even just a even my level and staying <laughs> is an accomplishment in itself. And personally, I definitely I definitely believe that being Latinx in this industry, in this business, in this company, and at my level is an accomplishment in itself people come and go. And so, so that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And, and how do you think that 
that your your background has influenced what you're doing in your business, how you're how you're working with your team, with with your customers, how it's obviously a part of how we we all interact is our background. So how has yeah. the Latinx and, and Chicana side of you played into that? Oh man, I think it's major. I think from day one, I it's kind of like when I was teaching. When I was teaching, I would see kids struggle with something and I knew there was an opportunity there. And that was where the learning happened. And similarly, looking back at myself nine plus years ago, where the struggles were and still continue to be, whether in my business, because business can often be a mirror of what happens in society, those struggles were were where I was meant to grow, right? And so that became in large part, a big piece of my purpose, a big piece of my purpose to help educate my community, not only on health and wellness, but also the business opportunity, but also an opportunity to know that my purpose is, is, is also to, to be one of the few that continues to go and that shows representation in our company, in our industry, and to, you know, be on that stage talking about the big, differences when we're working with people who are bicultural, who are different from other cultures and that sort of thing. So it's become a part of my purpose. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, as you also mentioned in your introduction, you have additional modalities where you're working with people. What are what are the ways that you are working with people that is the non-traditional network marketing, you know, specifically Arbonne, uh, yeah pieces that that you add that you've added to your business to help provide more value. Yeah, so so interesting enough I think it's probably been about a good year and a half although the the personal professional development has happened throughout and that's a big piece of our industry, right? But I think but I really took that a step further and realized Oh, it's not just about reading and and learning all the time, which I'm always doing that. It's really about doing the inner work, right? And I be, I, I firmly believe, you know, that that the inner work is where we where we uncover really and remember who we are and what our purpose is and where you know and and everything we bring with us is a piece of that story, right? And so 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 about a year and a half ago, interestingly enough, through BNI. Through a BNI visitor, I met someone who just spoke to me. I knew I needed something else in terms of whether coaching or something. And, and, and I was also kind of seeking kind of a, a spiritual, like, I got to figure that piece out too. And so the modality that really I've been using is something that she developed and it's called core wound healing. And it's something I've really been working really on healing myself, the inner traumas, you know, which I believe everyone on the planet has, whether from, you know, when we were young and little or traumas happen also, we're, we're wounded also in our adult lives and carry that with us. I yeah. believe everything blocks us, you know, things block us for a reason and it blocks everything, including our business. And so the short answer is it's called core wound healing. And I've been healing really for a good year and a half, um, about a year and a half with that modality. And it just kind of organically became something that I worked for me. It helped me move past a lot of blocks period in my life. And that impacts also my business. And I organically became a healer as well, sort of a healer. So I can help. And I, I so believe in, and I see it as a circle of the health, health and healing of a person, anyone, it it's not just the body, which I help with nutrition, right? Through our bond in my business and coaching, but it's also the the mind and the spirit. It's just if we can heal one, right, we can heal the gut. But if the mind and the spirit are not healed, then we will just revert and still not be happy and still not be our ultimate selves. So I feel that they're all really important. So yeah, so it's called core wound healing. That's awesome. And it's it's something that is is new in my world. I I've I heard nothing of it until you and I met for our one-to-one -one. and none of my listeners are going to be, well, none of my regular listeners are going to be surprised by the fact that we met through BNI. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's also an important part of business because we are in network marketing, direct sales. Half of your job is to network. Half of your job is to market, right? It's literally in the title of the, the business model, network mm -hmm marketing right networking so how has the the networking piece played into i mean obviously you met the gal who does the core wound healing and that was beneficial and has added to your business how else has networking in a very structured setting like that been beneficial to your arbon business and your your health and healing business now 
Oh man, it's been well in really in BNI I've focused solely on Arbon health and wellness products. But but yeah, that is also how I met, you know, we could say my coach, spiritual healer, I don't know, lots of things for me. I met her that way. She was a visitor. But BNI I I I have to count back exactly how many years, but I want to say I've been a part of BNI for about five years now. And so it's been like half of the time I've been I've been building an Arbon business. And and I first I enjoy networking. I absolutely enjoy it. And I think that's a big part of also our business. So the good thing is I like to talk to people and I like to get to know people. And when I started and tried and dabbled in networking groups and meetups and that type of thing before years ago now, it I enjoyed pieces of it, but it didn't seem to work the way it was supposed to work, like what the intention was. And so when I was introduced to BNI, I went to a couple of meetings, different chapters. They weren't the exact fit for me. And then I met a couple of business owners from the chapter I'm with now. And they they seemed like a fit for me even before you know, visiting their chapter. I visited the chapter and I realized it was a good fit. And what I realized with BNI is that BNI does networking right. And the people there are there to you know, yes, to build their business, but it's they're there to give and they get that. And if they say they're going to show up, they're going to show up. And they, they're doing the things that I wanted to do in other networking, but people, it was just, it was not working because the intentions are, were different. You know, it wasn't like we say in BNI. I mean, yeah, in BNI, is, it wasn't giver's gain, you know, right. um, it was about take or take. <laughs> so, so it's just networking done right and it works. And for me, my personal business, really my entire business grew. And when I look at my, the majority of my clients, my direct clients, they're because of BNI now. And really probably a good portion of my business is now because of BNI as well. I love that. And and I would agree. I think that the benefit of that and, and for for any listener who's right now listening and saying, oh, well, I'm not a part of BNI. I'm part of this other networking organization that's BNI like. Great. What what I'm pointing out, and this is not like t- supposed to be a commercial for BNI, but anybody yeah. who knows, I'm a member, so it's it's how we're going to talk about networking, right? As part of the the business, is is that alignment of core values? Because mm-hmm. once people find out the the core values of BNI, and they go, "Oh my gosh, I'm seven for seven on those core values." You know, all of those things matter to me. Those are my top core values, too. Then it makes sense. It's a no brainer to be a part of that organization. So, you know, when when somebody is talking to me about their networking and what they're doing and they're saying, well, I'm not getting the results that I want from networking. And I'm like, well, well, the groups that you're going to, how are you aligned in values. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. do you even know their values? What are their values? What are their what's the purpose? What's the mission? What's the vision of that particular networking organization? Is it just to have a place where a bunch of people meet and that's it? Cuz that might mm-hmm. be all that they're trying to provide. Yeah. And that's totally fine. And cuz if that's what they're doing, then hey, they've met their purpose. They've met their mission to have a place where a bunch of people connect. It's up to you to figure out the rest, you know? And some of these more directed, what are called strong connection networks, like ABNI or NTI or Team or, oh my gosh, all the different kinds that are out there, when you start to look at those core values and and things. So in in doing this, you've been in business long enough now, and, it's, and I would guess that even with your core wound healing, values is something that maybe has come up with you, for you as part of this process. What are some of the, the, the values that have driven your business, that have driven you in life towards where you are today? I think a couple are and it's really aligned with all the things I do, right? It's service and gratitude. I think those are two major ones. And even before the things that I do now, right? My business really took a turn. I felt when I started approaching my business from a place of servitude and service to people, regardless of, you know, what is is sold or not sold. And so that that is really aligned with BNI. That's really aligned with core wound healing. It's really aligned with everything. And so my, and, and, and gratitude for all of it, where I am in my business and, and just, and, and 
even gratitude for the wounds and the trauma because I am where I am because of all of it. So service and gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting because one of the things that has really come up for me recently is in the in the values conversation, for example, especially for for BNI, the recognition value. Mm. Really, when you dig down into recognition, recognition is gratitude. It's, mm -hmm. hey, I see what you're doing. I see what you're providing for us as a group, what you're providing for your customers and clients. I, I see what you're doing and I want to I want to recognize it. And that's a that comes from a place of gratitude. Thank you for yeah. doing that, even mm -hmm. if it hasn't directly impacted me. The fact that it's out there direct impacting somebody, impacting the chapter, impacting the region, impacting their customers, that recognition piece starts with gratitude mm -hmm. and, and recognizing that. So I, I, I love that that part of gratitude and, and thank you notes are something that I talk with my clients about all the time. Do you, are you sending yeah. regular thank yous to mm -hmm. your customers, clients, hostesses, referral partners saying, hey, thank you for sending me that referral. Here's what happened. Thank you so much. Because this because of that introduction, here's what we were able to heal for somebody. Here's what we were able to create for somebody. Thank you. And that's because of you. So yeah. love that part. So as you've been going through your business and doing all of this, we all know business in nine years, especially, is not all rainbows and roses. What are some of the obstacles and challenges that you have dealt with in these nine years that you can maybe share a solution to something that you dealt with? So that way, somebody who's listening right now, if they're going through the same thing in this moment right now, and they go, oh, I hadn't even thought of trying that. Mm -hmm, what's, mm -hmm. what's an obstacle or challenge you've dealt with in the last nine years that you solved? And, and how did you solve it? Well, I think there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of big ones. There's a lot of, you know, seem seemingly smaller ones. But, you know, one of them would probably be the, the blocks, right? Kind of like what I've talked about with, with healing. And, you know, there definitely had been a plateau. And regardless if we're looking at numbers or money or title or all of any of that, um, yeah, that comes with plateaus. But really, at the end of the day, the plateau is with where we are, right? With our mind and our spirit and our soul and all of that. And the block is with us <laughs> and then it impacts everything else. Um, and so I really feel that in the last year and a half, I'm a, I'm a totally different place because of my healing. And I realized I'm like, oh, the personal professional development that we're told to do and I love to do and the books and all that, just the reading and listening is actually not enough. You really have to do the inner work. So for me, that healing has been major because I, regardless of the numbers, regardless of the title, yada, yada, like I know, like I know, like I know, like I will be where I will be because that's where I'm meant to be. But it's really brought me to a place of internal happiness of where I am and, and confidence in where I am and, and knowing, you know, that where I'm going, but being very grateful for where I am. And it's almost like brought me back to, it's like, you can't have the, the success or whatever that you're looking for if you're not grateful for the success you have right now, right? So and another piece I was going to say is in our business type of business, you see you see the ups and the downs, right? And literally you see them in numbers as well. And I think, you know, I saw one time somebody explained this in a graph and it just made so much sense was, you know, it's like your ups and downs here. And then you look at the bigger picture and your ups and downs over here, your lowest of quote unquote lows here is actually even higher than your 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 highs over here, you know, years prior. So it's like relative, right? And so like yeah. I could look back at my business even five years ago and say, whoa, like, you know, the ebbs and flows are going to happen in business. But when I compare and look at the bigger picture, I'm like, it's phenomenal what, you know, it's like the solving of the thing is like, it's phenomenal what staying consistent and having the grit and not leaving does to a business. Because when I look at my business now, I'm like, wow, it's phenomenal, even just what the repeat business does over nine years. And that in itself is huge. And just knowing like the staying, the grit, the consistency, and looking at those ebbs and flows on the bigger picture is just a massive difference. And so it's almost like, it's, it's almost being able to see, okay, sticking with this and the consistency and the grit those ebbs and flows now, later on, yes, there's going to be ebbs and flows, but it's going to be at a totally different relative level. And it's like, you almost can't compare. And I'm just so grateful for now being able to take a step back and say, wow, 
what, when people leave, I'm just like, oh my gosh, if you would only see what would continue, right? And just right. even just in my consistent reorders and clients, even if that just continued, that in itself is massive. And, and that is really consistency and sticking with it and grit. Yeah. So, you know, one of the questions I ask everybody on the show is what is your secret to direct sales success? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that might just be it, right? Yeah, so yeah. so is that is that would you say is that been your secret? Is that that consistency over time? Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's like it, those are the two answers, exactly what I just talked about. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the consistency over time. And it's not about constant. And I think that's a that's a big it's consistent, not constant, because I think sometimes in this business it's just too much, right? It's like it's too much. And it doesn't and that's burnout that is not people can't can't duplicate that nobody wants to do that yes like you know taking it up a notch because because of this or that or you want you know you want to reach this level or that goal yes that is great and fine but the consistency absolutely which is different than constantly has been one of my keys and one of the things that I share with others but also that switch that really I just made in the last you know year and a half to two years was from understanding that personal professional development is not just reading it's not just being you know just not a it's not just being a professional you know, person who goes to the meetings and listens to the books. It's about doing the inner work. And until that happens, if we're only searching for the outwardly and never look inward, then then those blocks will continue to be there. It's like people searching outwardly is for a reason. You know, it's for a reason. And it's because they never took the time to look inwardly. And and the blocks will always be there if we never take the time to look inwardly and do the work inwardly. Ah. Uh. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's amazing to me. So what what you brought up in there um, reminded me of that. I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook or LinkedIn because I've seen it on all the different places. It's probably also been on Instagram a hundred times too, if not more. That that picture of um, there's two guys like digging a tunnel towards uh, a a diamond mine, or you know, in a diamond mine, mm -hmm. and one guy gives up and you can see him walking out of the tunnel with his pickaxe on his shoulder, just totally dejected, just like, or he might be dragging it behind him or something. I can't remember what, what, but mm -hmm. his little tunnel was inches from hitting the, the, gold. the gold mine, the diamond mine. Right. And the yeah. other guy is just plowing away, super excited, you know, and just, it's like the number of people who quit right before they hit that switch, that mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. that whatever it is, just, mm. Yeah, three feet from gold. Yeah, exactly. For inches. The, yeah, sometimes inches, literally yeah. so close because they were about to make that that mental shift, that verbiage yeah. shift that they they may have finally just been doing just enough of the inner work to finally just, you know, something clicks or whatever you know yeah and yeah. just oh like that that's what makes me so sad because one of the things that i i regularly say here on the show is the only failure in direct sales is quitting that's mm -hmm, the only mm -hmm. time you've mm -hmm. failed is when you've quit when you've given up completely and just thrown your hands up in the air and said i'm done yeah. never again that to me is failure anybody who has a bad week a bad day a bad month maybe a bad quarter even mm -hmm life happens yeah. you know it's how you react to it right absolutely yeah no absolutely yeah you're completely right i totally agree <laughs> so it's it when you're going through these these kinds of things then i think it's really important to just have that perspective because i think you're you're right with that that ups and downs your ups and downs in year nine are much different than the ups and downs you have in year one. And mm -hmm. your lowest of lows is higher than your highest of highs when you were in year one and versus year nine now, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a really important perspective for people to have and, and taking a look at those numbers. So it doesn't matter where you are in your business, if you can pull your numbers from time to time and just mm -hmm. compare, hey, Remember when I used to think that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That when, was that, a what, bad that was month? hard. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's yeah. like, and and nowadays I think that you know only selling four thousand is like the worst ever. And it's like, 
And back then I couldn't even hit a thousand in sales. Come on yeah. now, right? Yeah, like right. Yeah. The, the, that really helps give you perspective on business and the growth, right? Yeah. And exactly. And the, and the growth and, and not just in the numbers, right? Because it, it very much so is aligned with where we are. And, and that, if nothing else, I tell people, I'm like, and I know people don't sign up for a business like this for, yes, I want to sign up for personal growth and development. That's not what people are <laughs> looking for, right? But that ends up being so much bigger and greater and more powerful because you 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 can see the correlation between the numbers and all of that with where we are personally and where we are developmentally and you know and and I think there's so many correlations to you know business and being an athlete and and relationships it's all connected and how we feel and do and think about our business is also very much so aligned with how we do and feel and think about everything in our life, including, I mean, I feel like I've, I, I know I've become a better parent, a better partner, a better everything, you know, and it's all aligned. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's so important for people to know. So Deborah, this has been, oh my gosh, I love it. Such a deep conversation. I, you know, going, going, you know, more than just that surface level of, of business. So I want to thank you for going deep with us today. I so appreciate that. So if after listening to this right now, our, you know, the listener says, I want to know more about Deborah, I want to know about more, maybe more about Arbon or maybe your core wound healing, how can they get a hold of you? How would you like them to reach out to you? Yeah, I would say my Instagram account, it's Healthy Latinx Mama. And it's pretty simple. I think I don't think there's anybody else out there, <laughs> healthy Latinx mama. And it just really describes me and who I am and where I come from. And you can just reach out there. Absolutely. And I'm awesome. yeah, happy to connect. Yeah. Well, for those of you who are listening for the very first time and you want to make sure that you get right to Deborah's Instagram account, um, grab your phone as long as you're not driving, grab your phone, click on today's episode, scroll up just a little bit and you'll see in the show notes, we have Deborah's Instagram link right to her account. So that way you can click in there, follow her and reach out to her, send her, shoot her a quick DM, let her know that you heard her here on the Badass Direct Sales Mastery podcast and let her know, you know, what you love about today's episode let her know what what was your light bulb moment and ask your question of her about arbon about her life and her journey or even about the core wound healing so deborah thank you so much for sharing yourself today i so appreciate you you're welcome thank you very much for having me i really appreciate it oh absolutely and man i can't wait to learn more I, I think i need to have you on just to talk about the core wound healing stuff at some point because you know that's something that i think is a really important piece for us to address because sometimes it's those things that you know something happens in our business or life and we have this huge major overreaction and we're like wait whoa mm -hmm. and it's where did trigger. that come from and it's yeah. a trigger for one of from those something. wounds yeah. that we yeah. we we forgot about mm -hmm. or we hid it away or we we threw the box over it with the blanket mm -hmm. so that we didn't have to deal with that thing right so i'd love to talk to you sometime about that too because i think that's yeah, a absolutely. really important piece in in moving forward in your life and business is understanding where those come from what are some of the common issues so i'd love to have you back if you'd be open to it yeah of course i would love to yeah absolutely <laughs> awesome very good well Badass crew, you guys know how this goes. Stay tuned because there is another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to BadassDirectSalesMastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.